Hello, you beautiful bluebirds, and welcome back to another episode of Deja Blue. This one is really exciting for me because if you've been listening to season one and all the way through season two, you'll know that the Gene Keys is pretty much my Bible. And in season one, we did a group manifestation exercise. So I asked you, even if you were if you were driving a car, I asked you not to close your eyes, but everybody else, close their eyes in that moment and visualize Richard Rudd, the founder and author of the Gene Keys, to come on to Deja Blue. And right now, through the grace of God and all things magic in the world, Richard is here with me on Zoom. This is my first time doing a podcast with a person not actually here in the physical. Um, and so this is an incredible opportunity to be able to uh, have Richard here live from Devon uh, coming into Deja Blue while I'm here in Malibu in California. Um, and so Richard, thank you so much for being here. Very excited. You know, you, you called and here I am. His, it seems like Richard's third iPhone is never switched off, um, and so he he picked up the messages, Bluebirds, and uh, and now he's here. So I just feel so grateful. This is actually the second time that I've been able to interview you uh, within a week. So uh, yeah, there's there's some magic weaving in the in the interwaves right now, and I'm just so grateful to be able to um, continue to weave with you in a good way and pick your brain, your miraculous brain. Uh, that has <laughs> he's shaking his head. <laughs> that birthed uh, the the gene keys into this world that has impacted so many people's lives. Uh, to be able to find a sense of truth in the great Maya, the sea of illusions, like some actual truth and resonance to actually understand the blueprint, our genetic imprint of what we're born with, so that we can actually unlock our, our DNA into our potential by moving through the shadow frequencies and into the gift. So. Richard, um, first and foremost, I would love to hear it from your lens, and I, I'm sure you've probably done this a million times over, just giving it, the Gene Keys just a little introduction to anybody that's tuning in that is not familiar with the Gene Keys, just so we can give them some context as we then continue to unravel together. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Blue. It's lovely to be here and um, welcome everyone, wherever you are. Um, uh, Gene Keys is, um, it's a, it's a, uh, I guess it's a system of transformation. Um, it's a, but it's more than that. It's also a kind of way of life. <laughs> um, and, um, it, it all began, it begins really for me with this, um, expression, the art of contemplation, right? And that's, that's the secret for me, the art of contemplation to know how to contemplate is to be able to basically solve any problem in the universe. So whatever question you have, whether it's about your relationships, whether it's about your health, whether it's about, you know, past lives or, you know, which yoga class you should take or, you know, what food you should eat or what kind of nutrition, all those kind of things. There is nothing that cannot be solved through the art of contemplation. Right. What that means is that, that the answer to everything is inside us. And so we just need a, a kind of clear means of going in and finding it. So that's that's the tool that I use, share, teach, and kind of encourage and invite people to cultivate. And, and then what I have to go with that is a big map, right? So the, and the big map is called the Gene Keys. And the Gene Keys is, as, as you said, look, it's all these, co it's the codes of consciousness. Um, and it has a sort of mathematical, where well, it has a mathematical basis connected to the I Ching and connected to our DNA. Um, but all that stuff aside, which is all very interesting, um, essentially what it is, is, is a map of the different states of consciousness potential for, for human beings, for the whole of humanity. So all states. Now, if you can imagine that, all states kind of mapped. Um, and they're mapped in these frequency bands, and there's 64 of them. So they're sort of genetic archetypes. And, and they begin with shadows. And then as we learn to transform those shadows, those patterns inside our lives, we learn to accept them. We learn to be gentle with them. We learn to embrace them. We, and, and often they're trauma as well. They're actually physical trauma in the DNA in our bodies, stored in our bodies from our childhood or even possibly from past you know, lives or ancestry. Um, then we unlock the gift frequency. So, so in a way, the secret to Gene Keys is every shadow contains a gift. 
that means that every difficult situation in your life has an amazing possibility for you and if you know how to unlock it through this deep lens of contemplation then um, you can unlock that potential and then it will manifest in your life as a kind of burst of creativity or a burst of joyousness or many things it can become <clears throat> and eventually it will even flower further into a kind of an, a sort of higher embodiment of truth itself um, which I call the cities, the, cid, the cities, which are, is a Sanskrit word meaning kind of divine illumination. Um, so there are these 64 words and, the, and in three levels, a shadow, a gift and a city. So I'll give you one example and then I'll stop. Um, if you have in your profile, because you have a genetic profile that goes with the gene keys, which is run off your birth time. If you have in your profile, like blue, you have the gift, uh, it's 27, yeah? Uh, well, my life's work is number one. Number one, right. Okay, so one and two, yeah. So, um, Jinky one, you know, so that's the shadow of entropy. You know, entropy is about the loss of energy, the deflation, um, kind of wastage of energy. Um, that can be both through your physical, through your body. It can be emotionally like a sort of depression type thing. It can be a kind of lackluster work kind of thing it can be all kinds of psychological states and then the gift that's hidden inside that is freshness is is the creative freshness of you know so inside that state is hiding its opposite so inside that kind of loss of energy entropy state is hidden massive potential of creative juice right and then inside that the city the third level is beauty is the lens of beauty itself. So it's a bit like saying down in the compost, you know, of the shadow is hidden a beautiful rose, you know, and then we're going to go through that process of using that compost, cultivating it, planting that seed, growing that seed in our lives, and eventually that manifesting as beauty, not just aesthetic beauty, um, but like beauty that comes from within raid the radiance of beauty you know and the and the kind of embodiment of beauty of the universe as as beauty even the shadow being seen as beauty so that's an example of like um i guess that's a a, a, a little intro to my work mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, just in, in, in just a little nutshell of the magic because i feel like with the gene keys it's a never ending unraveling of the human experience and i've been working with the gene keys for years and yet there's always something else that i can discover from it and also realizing that in every moment my awareness is in a different state every moment is a new moment and so i can read one of the gene keys and then a month later read it again and receive a completely new impression of that gene key depending on where my consciousness is at in that moment um, and so i've just found it to be profoundly activating because it feels like it's just a lifelong experience just like you know the human experience is, is multifaceted multi-dimensional uh, many 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 layers to this uh, complex yet simple experience um, and the same thing with the gene keys and so it's an incredible backbone to be able to soften into the resistance or the uncomfortable moments by giving it a bigger perspective and context of how what our, our super challenge is also a super gift um, and the Gene Keys has been an amazing opportunity for me to actually embrace people when they're in the shadow because I have actually studied all 64 archetypes. So I'm, it's almost like I can see now when the archetype is playing out within somebody. And because I understand what's on the other side of it, I can hold space for that gift to come online for them as opposed to just judging them because they're showing up in their shadow, but actually an opportunity to hold them in their potential. And then that's essentially holding space. Uh, the definition that we say holding space. Richard, I'd love to know a little bit about your personal journey. How did you come about with, because um, I, the, the, the construct of the Gene Keys is uh, between the I Ching and astrology, uh, but I'm, I'm curious, how did you get to this point where the Gene Keys came to you, um, came through you? Um, I'd love to hear a little bit more about that. Yeah, sure. Um, I guess it began, um, 
you know, in, in 1996 for me in my late twenties, when, um, I had a, I had a spontaneous mystical revelation experience that lasted for three days and three nights. And, um, one one can't kind of predict those things and one always sort of thinks really did that really happen to him why did it happen to him and not to me and it was and and i i often thought like that and then i had one and um, and i don't i have no idea how it happened or why it happened it had no trigger that i can see but it did happen and anyway in those three days i kind of received a um a sort of download i guess but i didn't know it was that i i just i just remembered more of myself my big my big self my huge self my god self you know and i was filled with light for those three days i was a, i was a, i was a vast being basically um and um and i was mostly alone in those three days um but i went on a journey i was kind of led on a journey by this an impulse inside me throughout England, actually through different places in, in Britain. Anyway, um, in that, after that experience, um, I kind of knew that I, you know, cause it end, it had an end, you know, it kind of, it, I came down from that mountain and then I had a long period of trying to understand what I was supposed to do with that. And, um, and I didn't know really. Um, and then I, kind of eventually to cut a long story short i went and i i was having a normal life you know i got married i had started to have children and um and then <laughs> as i had my second child i think it was i think it was was it no it was my it was still my first um and then i had a second experience um literally while we we're in the nappy changing phase you know not literally when i was changing nappies but actually <laughs> you know in that phase when the, i had a young child and i was being a father i had another experience that kind of added the layers of insight and then it started to kind of coalesce for me and i was studying at the time a system called human design which is a system that combines the I Ching and astrology and various things and um and it kind of just came to me that that system was incomplete um and so i just all these new layers got breathed into it and it gave birth to a new something completely new it's really hard to explain because it was it i wasn't sort of it was a bit like receiving pieces of a jigsaw puzzle and i had certain pieces and then i would meet someone in my life path and they would provide another piece and then i'd meet someone else and they would provide another piece you know so i met this guy who was really expert in sacred geometry and then I described to him some of the states and the things I'd seen, and then he he drew it for me and mapped it, and that's how it came about this profile. But then that came in stages as well. So there was bits I had and the bits I didn't have, and then over a period of time it just assembled itself. Um, and then I wrote the book. You know, I sat down and I just wrote that book, that big thick jinkies book. Seven years that took, and sure. um, and it really. And then I'd finished that book and I was like, whoa, that is one book I've just written. That's like, that book is going to last a long time in this world. And, and I knew that and, and I had no idea what to do with it. I didn't have a publisher or anything. And then I found this man, uh, who a friend recommended me, he was a publisher and I gave him the book and he read it and he was like, he said that he said i'll never get this past my publishing team that you're not no one knows who you are it's got no sort of validation but it's like unbelievably deep he said i'm gonna try i'm really i'm, I'm in fact i'm gonna leave them if they don't publish it <laughs> and so and so he he just like hammered this book at them and they were or his publishing team were like no we'll never sell that's too big it's too kind of you know it's like, and he read it right so he said, well, I, you know, this is my, this is it, then I'm leaving. You know, it's just like, I, I really mean it. So he put his life, his thing on the line for me. And, and then the book got published and then um, the rest kind of came and then it's been growing ever since. And as you said, it's got many dimensions. It's a labyrinth of wisdom, but you know, the, 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 the different routes into the keys themselves, you know, there are many of them, 
they're just the kind of they're the they're the fuel for your contemplation but the contemplation is unique to each of us and it's actually that's actually where the magic is because you can then apply that art of contemplation outside jinkies you can apply it to anything as i said at the beginning so you're really learning the art of of wisdom actually what you're learning the art of wisdom and wisdom comes through the intelligence of our heart so a lot of jinkies is about healing our trauma so that we can um live with an open heart once again See, this is the first time i've heard this story um, yeah it's really really exciting to me because what i had picked up uh you know through the grapevine it's like chinese whispers at this point it's like oh and this is what happened to richard and this man and and how he created the jinkies was i heard that you got an inheritance and that it gifted you the time to be able to devote yourself to the book um is that what happened well it wasn't so much i had an inheritance but i'm the um i my family business in in london is um very old 300 year old wine and spirit merchants right mm. like the oldest best known wine merchant in the uk and if not the world actually mm. um but and and so i had a, i had a i had a steady income from that um that was like that allowed me to spend my 20s exploring consciousness and that's what i did so i i traveled all over the world in my 20s and had a lot of adventures and studied with different teachers and teachings and it was in it was towards the end of that part of my time where um i had this i had the the revelation experience um and then things become became more serious but yeah having um not like this massive amount of money but a steady trickle enabled me not to have to worry about kind of getting a, a, a sort of normal job um i still had to kind of take out a mortgage to have a house and i still have and all those things so i am still very much in the world but it did it allow me it was the it was some grace that gave me the time while all my friends in their 20s went and got jobs and got married and started having families i was still like at the age of 30 or so i was still exploring consciousness um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah it did that was partly true what you heard Okay. All right. You see, yeah, this is what happens to the Chinese whispers. It kind of sounds the same, but there's a few little like yeah. it, it, pieces that are a little bit off. Uh, so it's really yeah. nice to be able to hear it from, from, from you directly. Yeah. Um, I was incredibly fortunate, basically. It's beautiful to, if I was to zoom out and look at a bird's eye view of the timeline of your experience, it really looks like everything. I mean, I believe that just within everybody's experience, but specifically just looking at yours, uh, of the divinely orchestrated events that had to happen for this book to be birthed through you and these people that showed up recognizing that it is this co-creation this collaboration with with us and spirit moving through and and how these people showed up and and then and then this guy that was with the publisher was like believed in it so much resonated so deeply with the text that he was willing to step away from his life's work mm -hmm. in order to make sure that this is born into the world this is, it, it's so beautiful to hear this because, you know, trusting that um, the, the, the Dharma within, or like the, the life's work within this lifetime will unfold in the most miraculous ways. And when we send so much energy toward the how, we completely actually like set ourselves up, up for expectation of actually the divine orchestration of how it's going to look, which will blow our mind over and over and over again, because we're never supposed to know how it's going to look. Um, we just get, keep following 10 feet in front of us or following the breadcrumbs and then allowing it to unfold like this masterpiece that, um, you know, when you, when you look at it, uh, when you look back on your life, you'll see how divinely orchestrated the whole thing is. Co-creation mm. with spirit. Yeah, really totally. Beautiful. So um, the, one of the questions that came up was, are you learning in your own personal, what are you learning in your own personal development right, right now? Like, are you just continuing to be in contemplation with the Gene Keys or do you have other technologies to support you with finding that center point? Um, is there a specific spiritual practice that you have? Yeah, good questions. Um, I, I'm constantly learning and growing and absorbing new things that come my way um, as they come and um 
yeah it's it, it it's like you said things come when they come and there's like another envelope comes and you open it up and then something's in it and then you explore that i mean this year for me has i mean i'm a, as you know i'm a i'm a family guy so i have you know three kids and you know during the lockdown that's obviously all here and and trying to kind of find their way through that and i've been married for 20 years and I have, um, so I have a very, very um, kind of lovely relationship with my wife. And although she's not, we're, we're opposites, you know, so she's not really very interested in jinkies. She's more of a kind of hands-on person. She weaves things with her hands and natural materials and it's woman of the earth. And I'm more of this kind of celestial contemplative kind of guy. Um, <laughs> but right now I am, for example, um, recently, uh, a very, very dear friend of mine died and went through this process of um, of transitioning. And he and I were in Rodrigo um, Nino, a founder of the Assemblage in New York, incredible um, uh, kind of pl in series of like amazing sort of spiritual hotels. Um, and uh, and then he is also creator of Akasha, which is a game, um, an online game based on the Gene Keys. But basically, he and I had this over the last couple of years had this beautiful relationship where we just became deep friends, spiritual friends, and um, and then in the last six to nine months, we knew that he was approaching like probably his death, um, and so it and it became much clearer towards the end, um, and we so we have many conversations together about it and about you know that process. And so this year has, for me, been a real teaching around dying and also rebirth. So I've done a whole series this year of contemplations on rebirth and reincarnation. And as I kind of place my contemplation on something, it tends to just open up now and reveal things to me. And so my relationship with Rodrigo, as he was dying, enabled us to really unlock a lot of the kind of patterns around death and the bardo states and which are these states that you enter into before you die and then after you die um and so all of that just opened up this year and i did some things online there's some things on youtube with me and rodrigo discussing like literally a month before he died having these deep discussions about the sequence of you know the dying sequence um and his specific to him as well and so that's an example of like an envelope that's come to me this year that's opened and um you know it's helped me personally a lot because i think i had it helped me drop some fear that i had around dying myself like some residual fear even though i've been into deep states and mystical states that's still there in the body. It's sort of there. In, the body picks it up from the human field, I think, from just like every, because everyone's scared of dying. So, you know, in, in our materialistic worldview that we have, it's such a weird time to be alive in terms of evolution, I find. I, I, because I personally can, I, I don't necessarily remember specific lives, but I kind of know that I've been in, in other spheres where there is no fear of death, <laughs> um, which is much more normal. And this seems very abnormal, where there's this kind of forgetting. Anyway, so that for me has really helped me this year and, and Rodrigo's gift to, to all of us and me especially, has been so humbling and, and sweet and incredibly heart-wrenching as well and real, uh, especially since it was, during lockdown and when so many other people are facing death and facing dying and facing the fear of dying um possibly not everyone listening to this because for many people it's not been about that at all it's been a little bit kind of that's all felt a bit distant mm -hmm. but um it's been very real for me mm -hmm. so yeah that's mm -hmm. been something that's happened happening this year mm, that's powerful and so i'm learning all the time from things you know, like that, and yeah, continuously updating my my hard drive. 
Right. It's like, it's like we are like um, computers and yeah. we go through iOS updates. And yeah. that's what it feels like when I read the gene keys, I like read it. And then my, my hard, hard drive just goes do, 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 updating, do, do, take a moment because that's the integration phase. And yeah. then when it drops from more of like a intellect into an intelligence, um, place where it's like become the body intelligence that's when it turns into wisdom and that's when I see my actual reality change like things shift colors seem brighter uh, my heart seems more open I'm softer when someone shares a reflection that may not be from a negative kind connota- uh, from a positive connotation like I actually start to find myself more fluid like water and flow through this human existence as a witness as opposed to a reactionary and I loved that line in the 49th Gene Key that said um, in the revolution, um, in the gift frequency, the revolution, it's the, the 49th uh, Gene Key is the shadow of reaction, the gift of revolution and the city of rebirth. The line that says um, this is this creates the difference between the reactionaries and the revolutionaries. Um, is how we respond to things and how can we take ownership of our human experience and not project onto others still feeding into the illusion that we are inherently separate because that's an illusion we are all deeply connected and you can see that through the coronavirus how when one person gets it another person gets it another person gets it another person gets it and now it spreads all over the world because we are inherently connected um and so I, I'm, I'm curious and, and we talked about this on the unify uh, interview would you say you, you mentioned on the Unify interview that, that the 55th Gene Key and the 49th Gene Key archetypally would be what is playing out currently on the planet, would you say? With, I mean, specifically in the United States, with the, the word revolution is coming up. Like, there are protests in, all over the world right now that are happening. People are standing up to the injustices of the planet. Um, and the Gene Key that kept jumping out to me was the 49th Gene Key. So I'd love to hear your perception of is that what you say is archetypally playing out right now? And if you were to give it to more of an ex- a meta perspective of what's happening? Yeah, I think, um, you know, there's a, there is a major upgrade taking place um, in human DNA itself. You know, the underlying architecture of our biology is going through more than an upgrade. It's going through a kind of a complete system change. You know, and and this is happening everywhere at every level, wherever you train the lens. You know, so you can it, it's it's actually a universal phenomenon because you can't separate anything in the universe from from anything else. So this is not even unique to our planet. There's a shift taking place throughout our solar system, throughout our whole you know firmament through the cosmos, and we're a part of that. And um, we're kind of one of the little triggers inside that change, you know, that kind of spiral of that change. And so in the gene keys, we kind of understand, I can understand that through um, each code and how it activates the whole, through the whole gene pool, not just individuals, but through the whole gene pool. Because the thing about DNA is it's, is it's everywhere. It's, it's everywhere inside us. It's so densely packed inside us and kind of folded and condensed and there's so much of it inside us and most of the dna in human beings is actually in the gut you know it's in the biome uh, it's down there and and it's in back it's bacterial and um and so in a way that connects us to each other in a th- this is why you know bacteria and virus and all that whole thing is like we are literally connected to each other through strings and strands that we have we're not even aware of yet and so that shift that shift in consciousness that's coming is actually a shift that's i mean i i've spoken about this before it's a shift that's coming in our solar plexus it's in that area of our body because it's in that area of our body that we connect to the whole You know, it's the umbilical cord, literally. That's the thing that connects us to the mother. And so that area energetically and also biologically connects us to the whole, right? And so the transformation, the mutation that's taking place in human beings, and it takes place in in phases, um, is taking place there in the belly. 
And in the belly is also where all the, excuse my language, shit is, right? So all the trauma is also stored in the belly. The Chinese called the belly, the, the, you know, the, the cauldron, right? It's the cauldron where all the alchemy takes place. So those gene keys are to do with that area. You know, they are to do with that, this shift, not just in you and me, but all of us you know, and it's taking place throughout the whole biome and the microbiome. And so there are these, there are these kind of mutations that are taking place psychologically, biologically, emotionally, spiritually. Um, and they are, they're being triggered by this time of intense change. They're being, you know, everything is triggering everything else, you know, and, and that's why we're seeing trauma coming up collectively because it has it's the trauma of the past and when you're going to shift from one phase to another to a new phase the old part the old phase has to kind of be done with so that all so all the old trauma has to come up and be processed and it's an intense process that and that's individually and also as a collective and uh, that means toxins are coming out you know that and and we are having to confront our own past, you know, our, the violence of our own past and how we've set up systems based on the violence and the competitive nature of fear, you know, and everything we've created in this world, even the beautiful things, like it's all kind of at its core, a little bit flawed, you know, the systems are all, you know, they're not, they're not um, truly independent, you know, of each other. They're codependent. And you see that in our relationships as well. They're codependent. So as we awaken, we, we kind of break out of those patterns of codependence. And we have to, that means we have, that means it's so scary because suddenly each of us has to stand alone in our true purpose uh, in a time of intense change. It's like when your relationship ends and you've been with someone for a very long time, for example, or you really love someone and then suddenly it falls apart or someone you love dies and suddenly you're standing there alone and and that's a really powerful time and we're in a time like that where the sh earth is shifting the very ground of our being is shifting the fabric of our society is shifting a lot is going to is a lot is going to decay in order that something new can be reborn you know that's why it's called rebirth the 49th gene key and freedom is the 55th that's where we're headed freedom and um, freedom at all levels of being but true freedom is actually an inner state, not an external. It, 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 you know, it, it's both, but the true freedom is on the inside. And once we've found that on the inside, then it can manifest on the outside. And that's, that's a universal law. So, yeah, it's a really exciting kind of crazy time. To be I mean, born. it says it all over the gene keys. It literally is mm. like seeing this all over the gene keys um and so because of my my study in depth with the gene keys it's given so much context and trust and surrender into how it's unfolding so that when the chaos is being pulled up it's like okay this was actually anticipated and i can soften into the trust and and, and the mantra that's that's been just running non-stop for me is the most sacred thing is what is um, and the mind wants to try and create it to be something else than what it is and actually recognizing well, whatever is present is the most sacred thing. And it's for the evolution of mankind and for the evolution of my own genetics um, as within, so without. And the analogy that I've been using is like, you know, if you, you, you just get a new house, you're like, oh, this house is amazing, but there's black mold in the foundations of the house. It's, it's no, it, there's no point in just putting like nice liquor paint over the top of it. And we're like, okay, mm. that's just like out of sight, out of mind. It's actually recognizing, okay, if we actually want to create a sustainable way of living where I can actually live a healthy life, I've got to bring this house back down to the foundation to clear it out and then rebuild it. And ultimately that is the freedom that, that I, it's the answer to my prayers. And so somebody said to me the other day, it's, it's the rage of Aquarius instead of the age of Aquarius. It's, 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 the, it's the great purge. And it ultimately is the answer to our prayers, even though in the moment it doesn't seem like that because it's not all rainbows and unicorns. Mm, true. Yeah. I mean, we may get to rainbows and unicorns at the end, but it's, you know, we, there's a process to move through that is like a birth. 
you know, and births can be painful and, you know, at times also perhaps even ecstatic, you know, in the contractions and the opening and the closing and the phases, you know, we've, we've, it's really begun now, you know, many, many, many people have sort of been saying to me, God, I've been waiting for this. Well, I've been born for this. This is the time. Um, and it's, it's sort of the veils are beginning to kind of come off one by one, um, you know, and, and we can expect more and we can expect them to get kind of more intense as well. So, yeah, the, 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 the visual that I had, I mean, I think I, that I went through my awakening maybe about, um, I would say like five years ago. Um, and during that time, I started seeing life in America, like, and I talked about this in the previous podcast, like living in Disneyland, where it looks all nice on the outside, you know, it's painted all nice and beautiful and there's cute homes with hanging baskets outside. And, but actually when you go to open one of the doors, it's, you find out that it's a fake door and it's actually not real. And, and I started being like, I can see quote unquote, the Maya or the matrix or however you want to call it. This, this illusion that has been constructed off a of fear based system that is is continuing to play out and i could see where where people were plugging into it, and i could see where i was plugging into it and i it was very confronting and it brought up a lot of confusion and also recognizing that outside of myself if i was to look to my peers or the people outside of me for reference point of what it means to be human i was still looking at more of the the shadow um and so it was a it was a a solo quest to learn to listen to my solar plexus and my intuition again above all else and find that stillness amongst the chaos which is what i like to call the jedi of the mind and then it started me on this quest of of just wanting to understand the human experience beyond the great maya and that led me in many many different directions and um, one of the directions was also with plant medicine and i've talked in, to extent in the podcast about that and you 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 brushed on that briefly in the last interview um, that I did with Unify, where you said that plant medicines can act, can support you in accessing the acidic state, but it's not going to leave you there. It's not going to do the work for you. So I would love um, to first ask you if you're open to answering this question, if you've ever worked with plant medicines. Um, and uh, in fact, I'll let you answer that first question and then we can mm -hmm. go right into the next. Um, I, I did um, a lot, a, a little bit more when I was younger in that exploratory phase in my twenties, um, mostly with psilocybin. I lived in the, in the highlands of Scotland for a while and, um, and they used to grow up there near my little cottage, it was a very remote cottage. And I used to explore um, like that. And I explored it quite kind of intensely in a way because I would work, you know, I would collect them and then I would take them. Um, I'd wake up very early in the morning like three o'clock in the morning and then I would ingest them and then I go back to sleep and then I would wake up into the experience and it was a really powerful way of doing it and I was alone a lot of the time and then I and I would just explore like the being inside you know being totally inside and then I would go out into nature because it was incredible I was in forests and waterfalls and rivers and no one anywhere not a soul up there just me except the odd stag and things and so yeah i did learn a lot and um and then being a father and a parent that just was a different path and that was not going to be my um my journey but recently um i did um explore a little bit more with a, a really dear friend of mine who um is a relationship kind of sage um and uh, who's in his 80s and he uses it to help people with their relationships he uses like um uh psilocybin and sometimes mdma as well as a cocktail but he and he and it's like off the grid so i'm not going to mention his name um <laughs> and um but he does wonderful work and so i did some sessions with him just together um and we had one very memorable one because we went to the arctic together um, the high Arctic, because we were both lovers of the North. And I invited him. I just said, he was 75. And I, and I invited him. And I said, come on, let's go to the Arctic. I'd love, I've never been that far North. So we took, a, we took some pl planes. Um, this was a few years back and went to the high Arctic to a place called Svalbard, which is um, as far as you can fly on a commercial flight um, North, anywhere in the world. And, and then we, um, we rented a beautiful little cabin 
and and just with views of the of the arctic you know like in and we went in february which is when it's still dark um but the sun is just slowly returning anyway and so he introduced me to these substances um in that place and uh and our subjects were things like death and dying and um you know and we sat for hours just doing the pondering and exploring these states but i i guess what i so that's a long way of saying Yes, I have I explored some of them. I haven't done things like ayahuasca and DMT, um, but um, they just haven't, they're not been part of my path. And I, I know many people that have, like Rodrigo, who I mentioned um, earlier, was a real um, lover of, the, of that path um, and worked with shamans with ayahuasca. And many of my friends also do in Peru and uh, Colombia. Um, but it's not been my... Um, I haven't had time, so it's not been part of my my yeah. thing. I'm I'm a very family guy, and uh, that's my children are still kind of in that phase of me caring for them. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I I really acknowledge the power of that work if mm -hmm. it's done, you know, with care. Mm -hmm. Have you seen the movie Fantastic Fungi? Yes, oh. yes, it's great. So good. Yeah, absolutely. It's so eye-opening to the power of nature and to, to actually utilize um, all different varieties of plants to be mm. able to learn the wisdom of thousands mm. and thousands of years of wisdom and intelligence that is so far beyond the human mm. experience yeah. and being able to work with the consciousness. Um, I think for me, and, the, sorry, I was going to say that the most powerful kind of remembering that I have had on any of those plant medicines is the same thing that I've I came into touch with in my mystical experience, um, which was I always am and just deeply reminded of this will. It's like the divine will. Like I come into it and I'm just I'm aware that there is a will and intelligence behind all things, behind everything I think, say, and do, behind the movement and flow of the stars, the comets, the cosmos, the daisies, the everything. And that will is in everything and behind everything and is completely knows what it's doing <laughs> and, and seems to be benevolent, you know, and playful and a little bit crazy at times. And, but it absolutely is underneath everything. And so if you really, really, really know that you don't need to worry about anything in this life ever. That's yeah, the bottom line. I it, it reminds me of the um, of the phase that the grass is always growing, even if you're not sending your awareness to it. Mm -hmm. And we get so in the motion of do, 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 do. I've got to do this, otherwise it's not going to happen. And actually softening into it. And, and that's another teaching that has come for me through medicine, with plant medicines, is the divine orchestration and the intelligence that is constantly always unfolding in the most meticulous, perfect way. Um, and actually allowing to merge as we are nature as well and being able to soften that that is also working through us. Just like our heart is pumping blood through our body without us sending awareness to it. The same motion that, 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 that life is unfolding, even if we're not sending our awareness to it. And that's like, it just allows a lot of softening to come in, which is, yeah that you used of how to unlock more more essence of our dna is is softening into what is allow the softening to actually access higher uh, fractals of your own consciousness um essentially uh, so it's amazing it, richard i feel like you're my spiritual dad like, <laughs> like you, you <laughs> work with uh with with psychedelic in the past um and you and and brought through and birth so much in uh, understanding and insights uh, beyond the veil and then um, as you develop through your journey, uh, gone deep into the gene keys. And for me, the two together uh, are extremely powerful, not essential at all. And everybody has their own unique tools and their, no, their own unique path to um, finding that place of self-awareness. And there's thousands of tools um, to get to that point. It just so happens that there's certain paths that call people to certain places. Yeah. And for me, it's the, it's the accumulation of recognizing that plant medicines will show you or will show me the acidic state. However, the gene keys allows me to integrate it every single day that life is ceremony that the second that i walk out of my house and i get in the car i'm in ceremony and whatever movie reels are presented in my frame 
um, that is my opportunity to witness it as opposed to become absorbed by it um, and uh, and see life as a constant unfolding of, of miracles and the inhale and the exhale, the shadow and the light. We can't have the dark side of the moon without the light side of the moon and vice versa. Um, so uh, there's a couple of questions here that I, I, I put on Instagram and, and had a few people just reach out. Um, so somebody asked, how can we connect with our purpose and be patient if it hasn't manifested yet? Yeah, this is um, like a, a great question and um, a kind of archetypal human question. And um, we're, I mean, it segues a bit into something that, you know, I always got, wanted to talk about anyway, which is the, the this, um, in Gene Keys, I, I laid out a teaching called the Golden Path. And the Golden Path goes along with the book, the Gene Keys book and your Gene Keys profile. So there's three components, really. And if you have all three components, then you really have a, a, a juicy journey ahead of you. So you get the book, you get your profile, which is online. Um, and then you get the Golden Path, which is laid out in these three journeys. The first journey is, is about purpose. It's the journey into genius, but it's really about purpose. And it takes you through these four keys in your profile, four gene keys. And so yours is the one, the first gene key, the second gene key. I don't know what the other ones are. They are, what are they? Um, uh, so I have um, the first gene key at the top, then my gift is the 33rd gene key. And then the second gene key is in my evolution. Yeah, so you got the, um, which are your radiance and your purpose? Which are those? Yeah. Which uh, keys? So uh, one, thirty-three. Uh, one, yeah. And then two. One, two, thirty-three, and nineteen. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. So those four gene keys, then, are the journey, your journey into the into purpose, into the true purpose, the higher purpose. That's the name of the book, Gene Keys book, embracing your higher purpose high purpose of your life and um, what's really like kind of counterintuitive about purpose is it isn't a thing that you're here to do so it's not something you're here to manifest and but that's a little bit of a journey to get to that your purpose is actually about being your life's work is about doing and life's work is on the surface. Purpose is underneath that. They're related to each other. So there's two gene keys and they kind of work together. And um, this, there's a sequence through these four gene keys called the activation sequence. And so and it activates your higher purpose in a way as you contemplate them. And, and as I said, it's a little journey. So and, and I've, I kind of laid it out through this golden path teaching so that you really understand it layer by layer. Essentially, if you do that, teach, if, you, you, if you've done that kind of journey, it's, it's probably three months minimum, a year, kind of really going deep into it um, to just really unlock and use all the materials. I've done audios and webinars and stuff so that it, it opens in layers for you to contemplate. Um, that's the practical side. But the, really what it brings you to is the understanding that purpose is a, our true purpose is actually just about being in, in a certain quality. You know, so it's the quality that you emanate that then is your purpose. And then your work emerges out of that purpose. But the purpose itself is like, it's the deep core stability of your being. It's, and when you have that, and it's a, so it's a feeling and it's a knowing deep in the body, deep in the belly, rooted deep on the earth, you know, um, you feel really safe. You feel anchored in your purpose, right? It, and then everything comes out of that. So that's where my whole journey through the Jinkies begins with. It's like, if you don't have that, for instance, when you go into a relationship, then you don't really have an anchor in that relationship. You know, so you're all over the place. You're in codependence. You know, you just will be because the anchor is not there in your being. If you can't be anchored in your higher purpose in a relationship, then there's nothing stable for you to kind of ground from. And you'll just be at the whim of the other person's emotions, needs, desires, all of it. You know, and, and it can be a great, you know, fun 
experience, you know, for a while. And yet, you know, you need that purpose to begin. So the first phase is finding that sense of core purpose. And as I said, it's a feeling, you know, it's a knowing. And so that's really what I'm interested in guiding people into. Like, what is the gene key that you, what's your gene key there, Blue? It's, is it, uh, is it 19? For which one? The one at the bottom. Oh, uh, it's uh, empathy. Is which my purpose. one? Empathy. Oh, it's 33. Mm -hmm. 13. 13. Yeah. Empathy. So empathy is a kind of, you know, that's a real journey to get to, to true empathy because that true empathy is empty. You know, it's emptiness. You know, it's to empath yeah. To empathize with everything, with everyone is to be empty. Anything less than emptiness is not true em empathy. You know, there's sort of sympathy. You can easily mistake that for empathy. But that's not the same thing. That's when you're a bit tangled up with someone. You know, there's a bit of your ego left, you know, to sympathize. But to empathize, you're at, there's no one there. Mm -hmm. There's just the frequency moving in and out through the emptiness of, your, of the true self, of the deep self. And that's the, that feeling, that knowing is the core of your purpose. And you can certainly learn that through your relationships. Um, but that's the, you know, if you can begin to contact that first just the, even the even the outside of that feeling then you begin to feel more and more stable in your inner life and in the world mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. yeah it's a bit little bit of a journey um but it's a journey of contemplative unraveling to, to mm -hmm. come to true purpose mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then how would you describe the discord the discord is where you begin you know so the discord if you're paying attention, you'll realize the discord is everywhere. You know, it's like if you close your eyes and you go down into your deep belly, you'll soon come to discord <laughs> because it's like it's there in humanity. It's there in it's through them. It's through our childhood. It's it's the world. It's like everything that unnerves us, that makes us unsettled, that makes us a little bit afraid. You know, it's death. You know, it's everything that's kind of false that we haven't yet remembered. So mm. discord is like the, is the sign that you've begun your journey. So discord is not a bad thing. The shadows are like, you have to have the courage to look at them. Like one of my core shadows is unease, which is a similar thing, it's unease. And they're all universal. So discord's in everyone. Um, but it's, it's a specific word for you, like, as unease is a specific word for me to help me kind of begin that journey. So discord is more musical. It's more about, you know, an energy fluctuation in your environment. So anything that creates discord in you or triggers discord in you is of great value because it's guiding you towards your purpose. Do you mm. see what I mean? Mm. Then you got, then you unlock the gift, which is discernment. And so a lot of that is going to be about relationships. Like, who, is this my discord? Is this your discord? Whose is this? Who am I? Who are you? Where do I begin and you end? These are the questions of discernment, like the gift. This is mine. This is yours. This is, you know, it's like emotional accountancy. You know, that's your money over there. This is my money over here. Um, it's just making things clearer. This is my emotional wave pattern. And, it, and at a deep level, it doesn't really matter whose is whose because it's not about blame or pointing it's just about being fully aware of the feelings and the discomfort and owning it and then knowing how to respond in that situation in a in a appropriate kind of kind courteous let's say way towards yourself as well mm, so it's a each you know there's a whole learning journey in every single one of these gene keys and that's you know so if you know the gene key that relates to your purpose, then you've begun that journey specifically. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm, so powerful. So we have about, um, I'd say like seven to 10 minutes left. Um, so I just wanted to um, ask you a little bit about the deep dive program that is launching next week um, that I have uh, already signed up for now and I'm ready to go. It's a four month deep dive and mm -hmm. I'd love to hear bit more from you about it so that how can you know people at home can jump on this journey and have a, a container of accountability while going on this journey of self-contemplation yeah i mean I, I i thoroughly recommend it we we've built it um the, uh i 
I, I built it over many years, but then we trialed it this year during lock. We began it, and in the first one during lockdown, and then it, it spanned the whole kind of time, and it's been incredible. We had two and a half thousand people on the first one, or all around the world. Um, and it's a four-month journey. Um, uh, it's sort of like a, a virtual retreat. So you got your in retreat, but you're also in your normal, normal life. So it doesn't interfere in any way with your normal life. So your normal life just goes on. But in the background is this deep contemplative focus. And you're doing that focus on your own, in your own way, in your own timing. But we also have a kind of weekly kind of timing of like, of as we're moving through the profile. So you'll get your profile and you'll get those first four keys because this is the first four months. These are the four months we're doing each month focusing on one gene key. This is your gene key. This is in the sphere of life's work. We're going to really look at your life's work. We're going to look, you're going to look at your shadow, what that means for you. You're going to contemplate that this month. And what you'll find is it comes up when you contemplate it, it comes up, it shows itself to you. And then you learn from it in your life. But then you also have a great support to bounce that back off in the deep dive program because it's a journey that we do together. So, for instance, um, you get given your kind of schedule at the beginning and then that things come out on certain weeks and give you like um, more of a program. There's a, there's a little beautiful meditations that come as well which are really uh, musical with uh, that are incredibly popular. People do them over and over again. They, they just take you into the, the myth of this journey over four months. It kind of has a myth where you go, you're climbing a mountain, you go into the top of the mountain, down into the inner cave, you find some incredible secret in the cave, you come back out to the top of the mountain and then you return to the village. That's the myth of it. And those phases, those four phases, represent our entire spiritual journey so in microcosm it's enacted and so you get to move through these layers over the, that time um there's a lot of resources for you to listen to you so you get the audios for each of your gene keys which are audios that i've uh recorded and um they're about half an hour long you may have heard those you know they're like different from the book they're more subjective they're more story from me they're more maybe a bit more poetic and, and conversational, but they help you understand your gene key. You also get to explore the line of your gene key because every gene key has a line connected, one of six lines. And those are really wonderful additional stories that open people up in incredible ways. You're like, oh, wow, I'm the creator line or I'm the dancer or I'm the you know, teacher or whatever they are. And you get to really understand what that means in your life. Um, you also, in every month, we have community calls. These are incredibly popular. Um, and they're across all time zones. So you have, there are hosts for the, the whole deep dive process. So you have a series of hosts and then what are called Gene Keys ambassadors, who are people that I've worked with a long time and I really trust. And they're in there as well in the mix and they're supporting and they're, man, they're kind of moving through the forums and helping and answering questions and and and. And I, I also participate in those community calls. I always, I, I always jump in to at least three or four of them and appear and just Oof. end up in someone's group um, because I love to participate and as, a, as a participant because I'm there as the teacher, but I, I'm kind of pre-recorded. So it's like you get me all the way along the journey, but then you actually get the real me <laughs> so if you're, you know, in, the, in the community calls. And if you're lucky or unlucky, um, yeah. I can I pop up in your group and and the, but it's not just about me now that's why there's there's really competent hosts that are kind of taking it along um, who've been you know decades in the gene keys so really know the field and um, yeah so the community calls you get put in a breakout group usually of about five people and uh, in and we really hold space for each other in those groups um, so that we're sharing what is going on in our life now, what has been triggered by our contemplation of the gene keys of these codes at this time. And we support each other through just holding that space. So people make, and the synchronicities are incredible of who you end up in a room with. 
um, and which country they get in different countries and cultures. So it's very rich in that way. Jinkies is an incredibly diverse community from around the world, you know, all kinds of cultures and um, people. So, um, yeah, it's a very rich program. Um, it's very accessible and affordable as well. It's only $150. Um, Which is for, mind blowing, yeah. you know. People go through a four month yeah. coaching program, you look at it 12 yeah. grand. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. It is ridiculously affordable, but that is our commit, my commitment with Jinkies, all to, to make it really affordable. And um, uh, yeah, so you get a really good experience. And I don't know, I mean, you'll do it, so you'll know, and then you'll be able to tell them all if they haven't done it. But it's life changing, that's all mm. I can say particularly at this time, because who knows what's going to happen over the next four months in the world. So to be taking this time in sort of sacred reverence to look at what is the core higher purpose that I can offer humanity, you know, now and in the future, that is an incredible commitment to make. And doing it with another, I know at the moment we have about 400 people booked. So it's, and, and also people are going, in this one, we're doing it We've got an additional surprise, which is we're going to have people do it in villages so that it's not too overwhelming, not too many people. So your, your village will consist of probably 64 people mm. and you'll travel the four months in that village. And so, you, you know, you're, you can also connect with the wider group, but that village is more like a, there's going to be a little bit more intimacy. You a greater chance that you'll kind of um, won't be so overwhelmed. Um, and you'll find that there'll be new people there and there'll be people that did the last deep dive returning. There's at least a couple of hundred of them. Um, so they will kind of, you know, cause they were like some things that they missed and they wanted to do it again. And also you'll have these hosts who are experienced. Um, so there's, it, it's for all, you know, stages. You may never have heard of the Gene Keys and that's, this is the perfect place to begin. Perfect place to begin because it just you know and if you're in a seasoned traveler of the gene keys is also like it, it will provide you like it does with me incredible insights i go into those rooms and i listen to what people are saying and it's not just what they say it's it's the presence that they bring it's like incredible like to be vulnerable to be open-hearted to share from what's actually going on authentically right now and, and what you find is it's quite often something that you really relate to. Um, so, yeah, incredible, powerful experience. You can get from jinkies.com if you're interested. Um, and it's on the front of the web, website um, on the homepage, deep dive um, registration. You've got a week to, to do it. But as I said, you know, people do it in their own pace, in their own way, at the level that they can. So once you've begun it, you know, even if you miss the odd week where you've distracted you'll come back and catch up and you know it you you get emailed every every week regularly twice a week you get the kind of reminders of this is what's happening now this is how you get here this is how you get to the calls have you you know it's very nicely professionally done um it's a really a really pleasurable experience so there you so, go yeah. Blueberry. Get on the, the deep dive. I'm, uh, I'm doing it. I'm all in. I'm very excited. It starts next week. So this podcast actually will be coming out tomorrow, which is uh, Monday. And then I'll have a week from there at $150. This is nothing. This is like two meals out in Los Angeles. <laughs> um, and so four months of a life-changing experience and having the opportunity that Richard Brad might just pop into your village. Yeah. Um, and so uh, many, many little hidden surprises and, and hidden gems. Um, so I will put the information on the description of this podcast. Richard, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here, offering your time. He came from the beach. He was with his fam uh, down at the beach with some seals and uh, managed to make it over here for, the, for the, uh, the, the podcast. So Richard, thank you so much for your time and your presence, the greatest gift you could ever give anybody. Um, so grateful for having you here. Thanks, Blue. It's really wonderful to be here so for all of you that are listening at home uh, absorbing all of this wisdom and the excitement of the human experience the many layers the many multi-dimensional experience of uh, what it means to be human on planet earth at this time um, so wherever you are whatever you're doing may you feel seen and heard and loved and supported in your magic thank you for tuning in and until next week blessings Boom.
We did it. <laughs> well done. <laughs> awesome. All right, I've got to jump on another call. Good. I've got four minutes, and then we're going to host another call. Great. Um, but thank you, Richard. It's a pleasure. My dad, you're just amazing, and I'm so grateful. If you want to do it again sometime, I'm happy we can pick another subject and dive in. So just let me okay. know. Okay. And I I'll will. hopefully see you in the deep dive at some point. I'll probably see you on the, you know, I'll see your face in that little page somewhere. Yeah, just find me and be like, that's the bridge I'm going into. I'll, yeah. <laughs> amazing. And then I just don't, like, I've literally got like a couple of minutes, but I'm just curious yeah. about like, how do you pick your ambassadors and how does that work? Uh, well, they sign, you sign up, you know, so you've, and you've, you'll have done like all three parts of the golden path. You, so we know that you've kind of done that whole journey and, um, and well, I'm, we're now shifting it a bit now so that you've, that, cause I'm releasing a thing called the guides program, which is self-study. And that's going to be a prerequisite as well, but it's easy. It's, and it's, it's just a self-study thing. Um, so I'm not making it difficult. It's not difficult to become one. It's just when the next one runs is, is it's going to be a little time still because we've got so many other programs we're launching. But um, if you, I would love you to be one blue. You are one anyway, in a way. Um, but just wait until we open it up. It's a, it's a kind of, it's an initiation journey. I do nine months. Um, it's kind of, you know, online, wherever you are. And it's kind of, um, well, it's, it's really mystic and exciting, um, but it's, it's low, it's sort of low on content, mm -hmm. but high on like inner content. So it's a, it's a nine month journey that things happen in your life. And there are steps and phases that are marked out by um, symbols that are pretty powerful. And then, Amazing. yeah, you do it at the end of it, you make a cut, you do a thing called the Turton's Covenant. Um, which is something you do yourself in your own way um, that kind of brings you into the circle and then yeah and then but yeah it'd be great if you want and it just means that um those are the people i'm going to work more deeply with in the future the ambassadors i mean yeah i already feel like i'm an ambassador of jinky yeah, so like i are. turned everyone in my community a, a lot of people onto the you're team. amazing i'm so uh delighted to discover you <laughs> and That's i want right. to totally support you so just stay in touch you know and um let me know when you when you kind of you want to do another one of these i'm happy to do it i really appreciate that that means a lot to me and in i will the, send you an just email final thing like after this deep dive we're doing a venus deep dive that's in um september october and that's going to be the deepest work ever so okay. you know the venus sequence I'm here for this. I'm a Scorpio. Let's go. Yes. I know my Venus sequence. Yeah. Um, so we're going to do a deep dive on that later. So that might be a good thing to talk about at another point. Okay. Perfect. All right. I am so, I'm here for this, Richard. Let's go. <laughs> so good, Blue. Lovely to see you again. Likewise. Blessings. And, uh, yeah. Sending love to your family and yeah, um, we'll, we'll stay in touch. Yeah. Take care. All right. Bye. Blessings. Bye.